like Chevy's laying down here enjoying this nice, beautiful day. Anyway, I wanted to let you know a little bit of history real quick. The Fontana Village was created for a reason. And the reason it was created was because they needed to develop a little small um, town equipped with a hospital, doctors, uh, recreation, everything you can imagine. Happened during the war, back in the early 40s, they were building a dam. It was called Fontana Dam. It's the largest, tallest dam east of the Mississippi. It's a huge dam. Actually, the electricity made from it, it's a hydroelectric dam. It's, it makes electricity still today. And it made electricity back in those days. It was built for a reason. Actually, it was a cooperative effort between the United States government and what we call the TVA, which is Tennessee Valley Authority. Tennessee Valley Authority is um, responsible for a lot of the electricity in uh, the southeast throughout the mountains and throughout Tennessee, North Carolina, uh, now in cooperation with Duke Energy and what have you. But back then, TVA partnered up, according to the conspiracy, partnered up with Alcoa, which Alcoa was the aluminum company of America. Alcoa is still one of the largest uh, aluminum producers companies uh, now tied into Reynolds and other companies, as you might well guess. If you buy aluminum foil, you're probably buying aluminum through that same process where that's got a lot of history. Anyway, the conspiracy, by the way, the people around here were pushed out from the other side of what we call now Lake Fontana. And uh, they backed up the Little Tennessee River. Over 1,300 families were pushed out of their homes, including my family. I'm a Welch. Welch Ridge is the longest ridge in the Great Smoky Mountains, going all the way from Fontana Lake to the peak of Clingman's Dome, the tallest peak in uh, the Great Smoky Mountains. And um, our family was pushed out like many other families. Uh, there were small towns like Hazel Creek and Proctor and... Um, and other little small, small towns that uh, many of your Appalachian families grew up in. And this is obviously Eastern Cherokee uh, territory. We're not far from the Cherokee Nation or what you might call the Cherokee Reservation, uh, Cherokee, North Carolina, in that area. We're very close to that where I'm at right now. We're not very far as the bird flies. We're not very far. It takes a little bit of a drive to get there, almost an hour to get there. But if you were a bird, you could make it there very, very quickly, just going over top of the mountain. So anyway, a quick history of this is um, they were building the dam to create electricity to manage a project. It was an emergency project. Uh, many of the people couldn't be part of the war that was going on to it was a world war and people wanted to be involved and so people moved here from 49 out of the 50 states they moved here to the united to, to this area that i'm sitting in right now called fontana village which you got welch road over here you've got all these little streets named after my family and uh, there's actually two reunions here at the dam one's called the dam kids reunion which is the the and the children that were the descendants of the people who worked on the dam. And, um, and you also have what you call the Welch reunion here as well. So, but there was a conspiracy. The people here uh, were pushed out of their home. Uh, it was turned into the Great Smoky Mountains. And, um, and the conspiracy was, they call it the big lie, was that it was creating the, the electricity for Alcoa. When in reality, that's probably true to a certain point, but that wasn't the whole truth. The electricity went on down to a place called Oak Ridge, Tennessee, where uranium was being enriched to create the atomic bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and Japan during the World War. And this is where it all happened to create the electricity to manage the enrichment of the uranium many, many miles downstream in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. So saying all that, the people around here, uh, many of their descendants had a lot of resentment uh, toward the fact that they were pushed out of their homes, they were pushed out of their land, they were given 
very little for their land and pushed out where they didn't have any control, any decision in the matter whatsoever. It was a government decision where their land was condemned, taken over, turned into the largest uh, largest uh, uh, national park that we have in the United States. And they even built a road. They were they had agreed to build a road so that people could actually have access back to their homes, back to their land, so they could actually go back and and restart. And that that's actually called the road to nowhere right now because it was started. And they spent about fifty-eight million dollars on it years ago. There was a tunnel built through the mountain. There was a lot of work done on it, and then it just stopped, and it completely stopped, and it never started back up. Actually, Swain County, which is the county adjacent to where I'm at right now, was awarded uh, a settlement uh, because of that. And that, that that settlement didn't even take place until 2010. Uh, when the government realized, you know, that the people were upset for many decades later because of what they call the big lie, the road to nowhere. There's literally a highway going into the mountains and it just stops and doesn't go any further. There were a lot of promises made, but no promises kept. And uh, the big lie called the, uh, the road to nowhere. And so you can imagine the feelings of a lot of people, including my family, as we were pushed out of some of the most beautiful land in the entire world, uh, adjacent to the Tennessee River, just uh, traveling through the mountains of North Carolina on into Tennessee, creating some of the most beautiful landscape you could ever imagine, sharing that area over the years with the Cherokee tribe, the Eastern Cherokee uh, nation. In fact, my family has Eastern Cherokee uh, bloodline. La the last several chiefs of the Cherokee tribe here, actually their last name is Welch. We go deep into the Cherokee tribe. My uh, skin, if you notice, is not white. It's got a little bit of a darker tint to it. I do have a little bit of a tan, but this is very normal for me to have a darker tint to my skin because I do have Cherokee in my blood. And and I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the fact that I have Native American um, blood running through my veins, an appreciation for the nature, appreciation for the earth that we live on, and appreciation for all these beautiful mountains here. The reason we call it the Great Smoky Mountains, I'm sure, is because almost every day, if, if it's a rainy season like it is right now, it'll rain, and just a few minutes later, you'll see the the fog or the new clouds lifting from the from the rivers and the lakes and the, and the streams coming off of the mountains. And there's so many freshwater streams coming out of the rocks up here in the mountains. It's just absolutely loaded with good, fresh artesian water being pushed up from the earth that is some of the cleanest water around. And uh, and I purchased some land up here about 19 years ago and, and I have the most beautiful view of Welch Ridge, Clemens Dome, Fontana Lake, uh, some of the most beautiful views looking back towards Tacoa Gap as well. And it, you can hear the basketball uh, being uh, bounced in the background here because there's a basketball court on down here where they've built some uh, tennis courts, a little uh, pool area, basketball courts here in the village for uh, the children that come up here and play. And it's just a nice, nice location. So I'm here uh, saying something that hopefully helps you to understand a little bit of history. Uh, for many, many years, a long time, and I'm talking about 80 years ago. Uh, sometimes we, we get concerned about some of the conspiracy the theories or conspiracies that are taking place right now. And we want to make fun of people when they question things, uh, even here in 2021. And I can tell you that uh, people have a reason to question. People have a reason to question when the government tells you something. And, um, and it, it comes out decades later or even a few years later that it's not always the truth. We're used to that. We're used to that here in the United States. Many other countries are used to it as well. It doesn't surprise us. Uh, at the same time, it surprises me sometimes when people question people who question. And uh, I'll just say, believe whatever you want to believe. The truth will usually always come out. But the truth is the truth. Many times families uh, that are affected by decisions 
of the government, whether it is because you've had children have to go to a war um, in countries that you wonder why did they have to go in the first place? What was the reason? What is the real reason? And um, that's affected some of our families. Uh, it's also affected our families by many people being pushed out of their land because of emergency government projects around the war. And, and I understand that too. I mean, you know, the, the safety and the security of the nation comes first. And I also am the, the person that would be able to say honestly from my heart that it's, it's better for me to know the truth, even if I don't like it or not. And I believe that our nation should be that way here in the United States, that we should have our government that is uh, telling us the truth, even if we don't like what we hear, if we know that it's a decision that needs to be made for the safety and security of our, our nation, I believe we all should know it. And we shouldn't be told later, we should be told the truth, no matter what it is. And um, I believe that's what freedom is all about, is truth and understanding the truth and being able to live with the truth and being able to make decisions accordingly. We live in one of the greatest nations in the world and we, I guarantee you, will continue to live in one of the greatest nations in the world. We strive together, we strive together for harmony, we strive together for peace, but we also are tough, resilient, and we will be around for a long time. Just like this cabin, by the way. This cabin was built back in the 1800s. 1800s, these are big logs, giant logs, made out of poplar, by the way. They'd usually build the logs, these are dovetail cornered logs, old fashioned ar architecture by the Appalachian way. And, um, and, and yes, sometimes woodpecker peckers will uh, do a damage on them and what have you, but they don't have any finish. They usually cover it with a porch to keep the weather off and there becomes a natural gray patina on the logs that keep them from decaying and rottening away. And uh, that's why it's important not to whittle on them or cut into them or what have you and, uh, and let that natural pat pat patina, that coating, preserve that, that heritage. And um, I love this setting. I love the nature. I love this beauty that I'm around right now. And uh, I love this dog right here. Chevy is my right hand man and uh, and he is always with me every step of the way and he's experienced so much and I guarantee he's going to experience even more. Anyway, thank you for joining me here on my channel. Thank you for enjoying this time of a little bit of a history and I hope this helped. I'll give you some more documentary as time goes on and, um, and I encourage you uh, to visit the Great Smoky Mountains, visit Robbinsville, visit Fontana Village, visit Fontana Lake, enjoy nature, see some of the most beautiful areas you can ever imagine. And, um, and don't just get stuck in those concrete jungles uh, in, in what we call the city. Get out, breathe some fresh air, take a road trip, enjoy the weekend. God bless.